present for your listening enjoyment, John Lund as... Johnny Dollar. George Dean, Johnny. Congress Mutual. Oh, hi, George. Johnny, how did Las Vegas sound to you? Expensive. Can you afford it? Got to. A client of ours had a 30 grand diamond necklace stolen out there yesterday. Little of a sore. The dancer? One and only. Still packing them in after all these years. And still the same two weaknesses, Johnny. Gambling and collecting young men. Well, they say every girl needs a hobby, George. Not two hobbies, though. I should run into money. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum bring you John Lund and another adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, your truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> Wherever you go, whatever you do, enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. That lively, full-bodied Wrigley's Spearmint flavor is really refreshing. It cools your mouth and freshens your taste. The pleasant chewing helps keep your throat moist, helps relieve that dry, thirsty feeling. And delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is so handy. Just slip a package into your purse or pocket and you've got refreshment right at your fingertips. Chew Wrigley's Spearmint while you're working. Enjoy this refreshing treat along with your favorite summer sports. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is always enjoyable, and you can chew it without even taking time out. Get a few packages of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office, Concourse Mutual Assurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Jones matter. Expense account item one, $318.60, transportation, round-trip airfare and incidentals to Las Vegas and the Flamingo Hotel, where the ordinary citizen lives like an oriental potentate wishes he could live. After checking in, I took a short walk down the street to Lily Lasseur's hotel. Yes? Miss Lasseur, I'm Johnny Dollar, special investigator for your insurance company. Oh, well, that's very nice, I'm sure, but... Oh, oh, of course, the necklace. That's why you're here. That's why I'm here. Mind if I come in? Oh, please do, Mr. Dollar. This is Eddie Lawson, Mr. Dollar, my very dear friend. Just a doll, really. Hello. How are you? I think it's awfully droll and nice of the insurance company to take such an interest in my poor little affairs. I imagine they regard $30,000 as more of a rich, big affair. Oh, dear. Well, then I suppose you'll go around prying into all my most intimate secrets and asking such embarrassing questions that I'll just... Just... Oh, I think having jewelry stolen is always such a bore. Yes, the insurance company feels the same way, Miss Lasseur. Now, if you oh, just... Oh, good heavens, look at the time. I've got to fly. Lily, you remember what I told you? And now, Eddie, don't start being a child. Don't you think these Western outfits are just adorable, Mr. Zara? Well, they do a lot to point up a girl's personality, all right. Well, maybe this investigation won't be such a chore after all. Oh, dear, I'm late. Buck and Devastator are going to be just furious. Oh, well, tell him all about it, Eddie. That's my show tonight, Johnny. Ten o'clock at the Billion Dollar Club. Uh, join me for a snack afterwards. Here by the pool. That's where it all happens. Do it all. Buck and Devastator. Buck Bartlett, he's the writing instructor at the Lazy J Stables. Devastator is the horse. It's a better name for Lily. I'm going to marry Lily, Mr. Dollar. Oh, congratulations. Now, what about this necklace? What happened? It disappeared. That's all I know about it. Well, how? When? Where? Look, why don't you do like Lily said? Come around tonight. The same gang will be there, and you can check the setup yourself, see what happens. You can keep an eye on this Buck Bartlett if you want to kiss from me. And the other eye? Anywhere. As long as it's not on Lily. Oh. 
Balance account item two, two dollars and fifty cents. Lunch at the hotel. And twelve dollars for a hired car to the Lazy J stable. Horses for hire. English or Western style saddles. Instructor available. A Western style instructor, as was soon painfully obvious. Mighty pleased to make your acquaintance, Mr. Dollar. Lily just a call from here a couple of minutes ago. I know. You, uh, Eastern friend of hers? Well, I'm not exactly a friend. I'm a special investigator. Checking into those diamonds she lost the other evening. Oh, I see. I understand you were there. Might know something about it. No, sir. Beats me. There we was, sitting on that fancy terrace kind of thing they got there, hoisting a little poison and showing on some beefsteaks, you know. And the next thing you know, Miss Lily lets out a yap and says, My rock. Somebody up and took my rock. Well, I didn't even know she had any jewelry out there with her. Did anybody know she had? Well, not unless it was with Joe. Uh, Miss Joe? It was a gal I brung, Miss Joan Drake. I was thinking she might have known because she ambled down to Miss Lily's room with us so they could change their glad rag and put on the bathing suits, you know. She'd been pestering me for a week to meet Miss Lassur, but she sure wouldn't take nothing that didn't belong to her. Buck, I wonder if there was a diamond necklace on the terrace. Well, you ain't able to say Miss Lily lied about it, are you? Well, that little woman is true blue, mister. Matter of fact, Mr. Dollar, I wouldn't want this to get around, but I'm... Sort of aiming to. Well, let me I... guess, Buck. You're aiming to marry her. Yeah. I reckon it just sticks out all over this. Don't let it die. Well, seems I was having a late supper, Mr. Dollar. Out there in the open by the pool. It was after Mr. Sir's last show, so the four of them had the place pretty much to themselves. Now, who were the four, Marshal? Well, there was Mr. Sir, of course, and this young fellow she brought with her from the east. Eddie Lawson? Yeah. I don't know much about him, except she's dang near old enough to be his mother. You'll have to admit she doesn't work it, though. She sure don't. Yeah, well, the other young fellow's the one you talked to. Uh, Bartlett, he calls himself. Oh, yeah, the Texan. Yeah, oh, he's about as Texan as you are, Mr. Dollar. Came here from Los Angeles. He just puts on that talk because the Easterners like it, especially the Eastern women. That Texas draw comes in handy, huh? Uh, then the other one's a girl named Joan Drake. Yeah, she was there with Buck. Yeah, she's kind of funny. Young, pretty, smart as a whip. Came out from the East a while back. She's floor manager of the casino at the Billion Dollar Club. Talk to her. See what you think. I can't figure it out. All right. I'll see if I can. Yeah. Come talk to me again after you look around a little. Fine, I will. Ha. Huh. You know, I've seen these slot machines all over town. The last place I'd look for one is in the marshal's office. Well, that's kind of very special. Yes, I might as well take the jackpot with me. Lemon. Yep. Yeah, that's all it ever is. Huh? It's rigged. I send the money it takes in over to the county orphanage. <laughs> Charge it up to experience, Mr. Dollar. Expense account item three. One dollar for experience and information from the marshal's office. And seventeen dollars miscellaneous expenses at the Billion Dollar Club, where miscellaneous covers a lot of different items. One item is the roulette wheel. You're not having very good luck. Oh, I'm only paying for conversation anyway. Of course, I uh, haven't had much yet. <laughs> what would you like, the story of my life? We could start with that. All right. Lay out a dollar. I was born of wealthy parents, raised entirely by nurses, educated in exclusive private schools. I was graduated from the Swank College, which I shall leave to name it. You like it so far? Well, it is an original, but well told. Go on. Well, they have another dollar. You just lost that one. Now, where was I? Oh, yes, the divorce. Quite sensational, really. Father's clients withdrew their accounts and support. 
Bates, who was bankrupt within three months and dead by suicide within six. You see, the other woman jilted him, and I, a tenderly natured sapling, was cast out into the world to sink or swim. Well, never fear. Heaven will protect the working girl. Oh, that was awfully funny. Yeah, it was a scream. Fourteen even. And, uh, what did you do with the necklace? What did I... What? What is this? Who are you? Johnny Dollar, insurance investigator. And you're Joan Drake, who wanted badly to meet Mrs. Sir. She changed clothes in her room with her. Who was the only one who knew she had the diamonds out of the pool. The works here for about, oh, 50 bucks a day and could probably use $30,000. And I asked you what you did with the necklace. I think that ought to cover the... What is this? Mr. Dollar, if you'd like to play roulette, by all means, stay around. But I'm afraid I don't have any more conversation. Not at these prices. I thought I was overcharged for what I got. And this will kill you. The whole story was true. Hmm. And with all that background, running a casino is the best you could do? It's the best for me. It's glitter and glamour and sparkle. And that's what I was brought up to expect. The diamonds sparkle a lot, too, Joan. I missed Lily's first show at the Billion Dollar Club, but I met her by the pool at her hotel right afterwards. It was a warm night. The stars blazed against the desert sky, and Lily and her guests scintillated back from the terrace below. Except me. I didn't scintillate. So far, I wasn't any closer to that necklace than I'd been when I got off the plane. I had the feeling I'd learned a few things, and at the same time, hadn't learned anything. And Lily didn't help much. Did you see him? Did you see Eddie, darling? Isn't he just utterly gorgeous, Johnny? Yeah, the original Catalina ad. Just look for the flying fish. Oh, he's just beautiful. He was a lifeguard in Miami, you know. Much tanner than he is now. I see. Look at Buck watching. It makes me so terrifically jealous, and Eddie knows it, too. <laughs> Aren't they both just streaming me cute? Streaming. How about that necklace? Oh, it's too nice tonight. Let's worry about it tomorrow. Let's worry about it tonight. Oh, Johnny. You might as well go along with him, Lily. He's got a one-track mind. Joan, darling, I didn't see you there in the shadow. Just looking up glamour, honey. Where were you sitting that night, Lily? What a... Oh, by the oddest coincidence possible, right in his very chair. You see, ordinarily I kept the necklace in the hotel safe, but I wore it in my show that night, and it was late when we got here, and then we changed into swimming suits, and I didn't want to leave it in my suite, so I just brought it out here, wrapped in a handkerchief. And I kept it right here on the seat beside me all the time. So all of a sudden it wasn't there, did it? Well, yes, that's exactly the way it happened. Now it's all settled. Let's talk about something else. Well, you know as well as I do, it's not settled. You can't tell the insurance company the thing just disappeared, and that's all there is to it. They want to know how it disappeared, when and where. Well, you must be so hideously persistent. It happened while I was playing the slot machine. That one, right over there. I left the necklace lying here in the chair. And where were the others while you were over there waltzing with the slot machine? Oh, Around, I suppose. I don't know. When I hit the jackpot, I simply went right out of my mind. How about you, Joan? Where were you? Like she says, around. Oh, plenty of opportunities. That's what you mean. Oh, how utterly fantastic. She's a dear girl, Johnny. And I insist that you stop suspecting her. Or anybody else, either. Were all of you searched? Well, I wasn't, of course. But the others were. There wasn't really much of a problem, Johnny. We were wearing swimsuits, you know. Joan, I doubt if you went out of your mind over the jackpot. Did you notice where the boys were at the time? Well, as far as I can remember. I reckon a man ought to have the privilege to answer for himself, Mr. Dallas. Why, sure. Pull up an empty saddle and join the party. <laughs> you too, Eddie. All right, Buck. Where were you? I was over there with Miss Lily. I was standing right behind her when she up and hit that jackpot. I was in the pool. I came out when I heard everybody yelling about some diamonds being missing. Do you check them out on that, Joan? Sure. That's how I remember. Well, I'm certainly glad it's all sad. Oh, oh Johnny, you'll, you'll simply have to excuse me now. I've got to get ready for my show. Well, I'd be mighty proud to escort you to your room, Miss Lily. Now, wait a minute, stable to sleep. Oh, here. boys. Boys, you can both escort me. Come along now. 
I'll be right back, Johnny. Don't go away now. Curvy and soft as a kitten on the surface. But inside, all angles and hard as a rock. She belongs to a different age, Joan. The last of the champagne slipper girls. Johnny, how much are those diamonds worth to you? To me? To the insurance company. Sometimes they make deals, don't they? Sometimes. No questions asked? Sometimes. How much? Depends. I have to find out. Everything about life, Johnny? I don't know if I can help it. It's real crazy the way it works out. I didn't finish that story of my life, Johnny. My real name is Joan. My father was Jonathan Vanderly Jones. Jonathan Vanderly Jones? But if that's true, then... Yeah. You're crazy. The correspondent my mother named in that divorce case was Lily Latour. You know Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is a delicious treat that millions enjoy all year round. It's good to chew almost any time and any place. In warm weather, you'll enjoy especially the refreshment that Wrigley's Spearmint Gum gives you. When your mouth feels hot and dry, or when you're feeling warm and tired, chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum gives you a pleasant little lift. It cools your mouth, moistens your throat, and refreshes your taste. Besides, Chewing on a good, smooth piece of Wrigley Spearmint gum seems to add enjoyment to whatever else you're doing. So always keep some Wrigley Spearmint chewing gum handy. Enjoy it at home, at work, wherever you are. Remember, that's Wrigley Spearmint chewing gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. <laughs> And now, with our star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account item four, $5.90. Supper snack with Joan on the hotel terrace. I sat there trying to put things together. Either Joan had suddenly spotted something that had tipped her off to the thief, or if she'd taken the diamonds herself, something had caused her to decide on a deal. But which? And what was it? I tried to remember what had happened just before, what had been said, and got nowhere. You know, Johnny, it's funny. I've always been the innocent bystander. Up until now. Maybe that's what you ought to go on being. Unless you stole it yourself. But the daughter of Jonathan Vanderly Jones turn out to be a thief? She might, for money and other valuable considerations. Like, for instance? Like a chance to hit back at the woman who ruined her father. Mm-mm. How are you heading up a dead end street? Maybe you are, too. Well, I guess we're expecting it to be in Dollar Club. Not I. Little Jones got work to do. So is little Johnny. Maybe we'll meet in the same playpen. Somehow I don't think so. Bye-bye now. Johnny, what would happen if I just waived any claim of insurance on the necklace? Drop the whole thing right now. Which one did it? Sure, I don't... Which one do you think did it? Maybe I decided it doesn't matter which one. Suppose it was Joan. Would you still want to drop it? Oh, but that's ridiculous. She would... Or there's still another possibility. Maybe you started something you want to back out of now. Johnny, why must you be so hideously difficult? The insurance company sent you out here to save $30,000 for it. And I'm just utterly certain they won't care how nor why as long as they save it. No, maybe they won't. But what about me, Lily? It leaves me curious. No, I'm quite sure you know a good deal more about this than you're letting on. (laughs) Well, I've got to run again. It's time for my show. Bye, sweetie. Expense 
Expense account item five, ten dollars for an hour and a half of more miscellaneous at the billion dollar club. Lily was in too much demand for any chance of a quiet talk. And my other three chums weren't around. I was trying to decide whether to go back to the hotel when I was paged over the public address system. I picked up the phone at the end of the bar. Johnny Dollar. Marshal Kimberly, Mr. Dollar. Oh, yeah. What's up, Marshal? Well, it looks like one of those necklace people got herself in a mess of trouble a while ago. Oh. What do you mean? I'm calling from the parking lot. That Joan Drake girl. Found out here in the back seat of a car. She's dead. I guess you can cover her up now, Marshal. Poor kid never knew what hit her. She's the one you thought might make a deal, Mr. Teller? Yeah. Well, somebody made sure she didn't. She did her three or four times or something heavy. I'd been a ranch, judging by the mark. A ranch, huh? Did you find her? No. Nope. Did you notice her hands? Yeah. Apparently she'd had them around something greasy, rusty. I wonder if... Wait a second. Radiator's still warm. She may not have been killed here at the club. She could have been brought here and left. It's possible. Who's this car belong to? Buck Bartlett. We got the boys out looking for him now. Possible, all right. It all ties up. Do you want to let me in on it, Mr. Dollar? Let me check first. I'm doing a lot of guessing. Joan brought up this deal while we were all at Lily's hotel this evening. I think she just figured out how the necklace was stolen. I think she was killed trying to get it. And I think I figured it out, too. But let me check first, Marshal. I'll talk to you later. Ten minutes later, I was alone on the deserted terrace beside the swimming pool at Little East Hotel. I knelt on the edge and looked down into the water. Crystal clear, lighted by an underwater bulb sunk in the concrete wall. The pumping system was running, as usual, drawing the water from the drain pipe in the deep end, circulating it through the filter tanks in the pump room, and returning it to the shallow end. I took my handkerchief, waited with my room key, picked the spot carefully, and dropped it into the water. I watched it sink down toward the drain. Down, down, then suddenly it was caught by the current and sucked into the drain. Ah, so far, so good. The next step was the pump room. I looked around for the switch on the pump motor, found it, and shut it off. There was a crescent wrench laying on the window ledge. It was shiny and clean. No use worrying about fingerprints. I picked it up and started to work on the rusty cover bolts on the strainer tank. Probably the same way Joan had started. Not if you're clever, she said. Well, she was clever. Well, not clever enough. <laughs> Inside the strainer tank, laying in the wire basket, was my handkerchief and room key. And beside it was Lily's diamond necklace. <laughs> I was halfway across the terrace, and the lights around the pool went out. Somebody had pulled the main switch. I stopped and listened, waiting. But when it came, I was caught off guard. Somebody hit me and knocked me into the water. When I came up, I heard someone swimming. Whoever it was had come into the pool after me. I made the side, grabbed hold of the ledge with my left hand, threw back the wrench in my right as the slashing came close, I lifted it and swung. Hey, what's going on over there? Marshal. Marshal. Over here with that flashlight. 
What happened to the light? Switch was pulled. Here. Help me get him out of the water. Yeah. Watch my out, Marshal. This time, I had the wrench. That swimmer fella, huh? Eddie Lawson. Yeah. I found the necklace from the strainer of the filler system, where it's been all the time. He was lying when he said he was in a pool when Louie hit the jackpot. He went in right afterward. During the excitement, took the diamonds with him. Joan knew he was lying, and... She figured out what he'd done. He was a smart kid. Too smart. Wait, wait, let me put on some makeup. I must look a positive pride. I got your diamonds back, Lily. Oh, you... You did. Here. Thank you. Which... I mean... Which one of your boyfriends? Why don't you give up, Lily? Time moves along. The years add up. I'm not harming anyone. Aren't you? Joan is dead. Eddie killed her over these diamonds of yours. Dead. She's dead. It's all right, though, as long as you're not harming anyone. But, but how could I know? I didn't mean any harm to that poor girl. Eddie could have had the diamonds if I'd known. They didn't matter, Johnny. Just a gift a, a long time ago. I don't even remember who it was. J.V.J.? Those are the initials on the class. J- That's who it was. Jones. Some fool named Jonathan Vanderly Jones. They didn't mean a thing to me. Expense account item six. Fifty-one dollars and forty cents. Hotel charges and additional miscellaneous. Expense account total, $418.40. Remarks? Suggest you reconsider this account. Clients should be regarded as a bad risk. It'll happen again. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Remember, friends, wherever you are, whatever you do, enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. That lively, full-bodied Wrigley Spearmint flavor is really refreshing. It cools your mouth, moistens your throat, helps keep you feeling fresh and comfortable. The smooth, pleasant chewing helps keep you feeling relaxed, too. So you naturally feel better, work better, get more fun out of doing things. Remember, too, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is a refreshing treat you can enjoy almost any time and any place. Just slip a stick into your mouth whenever you want it. Do as millions do. Keep Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum handy and enjoy it often every day. That's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. <laughs> Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, brought to you by Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, stars John Lund in the title role and was written by Les Crutchfield with music by Eddie Dunsetter.